Did you know that during pregnancy, the uterus expands more than 500 times its original size to accommodate and nurture the developing baby? And there's a lot that has to happen before that uterus goes back to its pre-pregnancy size, namely the labor and delivery of that little baby. So today we are going to talk about what the different stages of labor are. And if you're new here, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant. I specialize in women's health and gynecology. I'm also a mommy to four and on this channel we talk about women's health, pregnancy, and baby. So if this sounds like a place that you'd like to be, make sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell. Now, before I jump into the video, let me know what brought you to this video. Are you pregnant now? Are you thinking about getting pregnant? I'd really love to know what brought you here. Now, in this video, we're gonna go through what cervical dilation is, how it's measured, and what you can expect during each stage of labor. Now, I'm gonna make sure you get all the information that you need to understand childbirth and make sure to stick to the end where I'm going to talk about if and what you can do to speed labor along. So when you approach the last part of your third trimester, you might start to notice false labor contractions, also called Braxton Hicks contractions. Braxton Hicks contractions usually get better with rest and they don't become more consistent or stronger over time and they don't lead to the delivery of your baby. However, when the time is right, you are gonna begin to have real contractions or labor contractions. Labor contractions, they're stronger than Braxton Hicks contractions and they become more intense and regular over time. <laughs> Now, as the uterus tightens and contracts, it pulls on the cervix, causing the cervix to dilate and efface. So in order to demonstrate this, I raided my kid's play closet and I found my daughter's baby doll and their Play-Doh. And I'm gonna use these to help you know what all of that means. So before you go into labor, your cervix is firm, closed, and it's thick. It's usually somewhere between three to four centimeters thick. And as the uterus contracts, the cervix begins to flatten, which means efface, and then open up, which is called dilation. Once the cervix is completely thinned out and opened, the baby can then move out of the uterus and enter the world. Ta -da. Now the degree of dilation helps your labor and delivery team figure out how your labor is progressing. It's one of the main indicators they use to determine how close you are to delivering your baby. So moving on to the stages of labor, this is where things really get interesting. So labor is typically divided into three main phases, the early and active labor, the delivery of the baby, and then phase three, which is the delivery of your placenta. And how your cervix changes through the first stage is key to understanding how your labor is progressing. Now, the phase one of labor is actually broken down into three parts. And now this is really important because when you are in labor, your labor and delivery team will perform a cervical check to see how much your cervix is opened or dilated. And they're gonna check it occasionally to see how your labor is progressing and to know when it is time for you to push. So the more dilated your cervix is, the closer you are ready to push. So before labor starts, your cervix is closed or a zero. And as your labor progresses, your cervix opens more and more until you are fully dilated to a 10. And then you are ready to push and bring that baby into this world. So the time that your cervix goes from closed to 10 is phase one of labor. And it's broken into three parts, early labor, active labor, and transition. Now, please remember that the time frame for phase one of labor can vary significantly significantly. If it's your first pregnancy, it's probably going to take a lot longer than if it's one of your subsequent deliveries. But in early labor, you might feel mild, irregular contractions that gradually get stronger and more regular. This part can last anywhere from hours to days. Now, during this time, your cervix is going to dilate in a face beginning from zero centimeters and eventually to reaching about three centimeters. You may experience some back aches, maybe menstrual-like cramps, and sometimes a feeling of pressure. The next part is active labor, and this is where things things get more intense. So contractions become stronger and longer and they're gonna last about 45 to 60 seconds and they're also gonna become closer together, more about three to five minutes apart. Now here, your cervix is going to continue to dilate from about three centimeters to seven centimeters. And this is typically where you're gonna be heading to the hospital or birthing center if you're not already there. Now in active labor, it's a good time to start using those breathing techniques that you learned in childbirth classes and then to lean on your support person if you have one there. You might feel more pressure in your back and and as the baby moves down, your water might break if it hasn't already done so. Now, if it has, try to take
make note of the color and the time so that you can let your health provider know. The final part of the first phase is transition, which is the most intense, but it's also the shortest part. So contractions are very strong, lasting about 60 to 90 seconds, and they're gonna be coming every two to three minutes. Your cervix is then gonna dilate from seven to 10 centimeters. During this time, you're gonna feel a lot of pressure in your low back and also in your rectum. Some people feel nauseated and even start to shake. Transition can be tough, but it's also a sign that you're almost ready to start pushing. So keep focusing on your breathing and rely on your support person and your labor and delivery team to help. Next is phase two of labor, which is the delivery phase. Now this is where the magic happens. So your cervix is fully dilated at 10 centimeters and it's time to push. This phase can last anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. You're gonna feel a really strong urge to push with each contraction, helping your baby move down the birth canal. And phase two ends with the delivery of your baby. Finally, we're gonna talk about phase three of labor, which is actually the delivery of the placenta. Now the hardest part is over, but there's still one more step. After your baby is born, you have a few more contractions to help deliver the placenta. This is usually within five to 30 minutes after the baby is born. Now remember, each woman's experience with these stages can vary quite a bit. Some might breeze through one stage and spend more time in another. It's all perfectly normal. What's important is understanding these stages so that you recognize what's happening with your body so you can manage your expectations during labor. Now let's talk about how cervical dilation is actually measured during labor, which is super important for monitoring your progress. Now it's done by your health care provider during a pelvic exam. During the exam, one of your labor and delivery team members is going to put on a sterile glove to perform a manual examination and they're gently going to insert two fingers into the vagina to reach the cervix and what they're feeling for is how open the cervix is. So as I told you before, it's expressed in centimeters from zero, which is closed or no dilation, all the way to 10 centimeters, which means you're fully dilated and ready to deliver. Now I know it might sound a little bit intimidating, especially if you're concerned about discomfort, but just just remember that your healthcare provider is trained to make this as comfortable as possible. So feel free to discuss any anxieties with them because they can help answer your questions, help you to understand the process and to make accommodations to make sure you're as comfortable as possible. How often you get these checks can really vary. Early in labor, it might be every few hours, but as labor progresses and you move closer to delivery, it can be more frequent. And the frequency of checks also depends on how your labor is progressing. And if there are any concerns about you or the baby, and again, understanding the progression of your dilation helps your medical team make important decisions about your labor management. It also gives you updates on how close you are to meeting your baby, which can be incredibly motivating. One other thing to point out is some people do not want cervical checks at all. Make sure to talk to your OB or your midwife so that they know what your desires are for your delivery. Now, a lot of people ask me if it's possible to make labor go faster. Now, there are a few things to consider and understanding these factors can help you manage your expectations and prepare you better for a labor. So if this is your first pregnancy, dilation might take longer compared to subsequent pregnancies. For moms who's given birth before, the body has already been through this, it already knows what to do and things might move a little bit faster. Second is your position during your labor. That can really affect how you dilate. So staying upright, walking around or even changing positions can help gravity to do its job and encourage the baby to move down into the birth canal, which can help speed up dilation. And number three, believe it or not, your emotional state also plays a role on it too. Being relaxed can actually help your muscles, including those around your cervix, to relax and open up. So anxiety and stress might slow down the process, making it harder for your body to progress through labor. And then number four, physical interventions, things like breaking your water or using medications like Pitocin to induce or speed up labor can also influence dilation. Now these are sometimes necessary, but discuss all your options with your healthcare provider to make informed decisions that align with what your birth plan is. And then finally, number five, which is natural variations. So every woman's body is unique and so is every labor. Some women might experience quicker dilation with minimal effort, while others might need more time and more medical support. This is completely normal and your healthcare team is there to support you through your individual journey. Now, as I've mentioned many times already, labor is different for everybody. So it's really important to approach your labor with a lot of flexibility and an open mind because every labor is unique. And while understanding the process of dilation is helpful, it's just as important to adapt 
adapt to how your body and your baby are progressing. So always discuss any concerns or questions with your healthcare provider. They're your best resource for information tailored to your specific situation. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, I have made an entire pregnancy series taking you through pregnancy week by week. I go over everything from baby development to your must needs for your pregnancy. And I'm gonna link to that series right here. Go find that week that you're at. Maybe watch a few earlier videos just to get caught up. So click right here and I will see you over there.